Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webcast. Before we get started, um, I want to remind you of a few things you've seen flashing across your screen. First of all, you can adjust your screen at any time by toggling the uh, actual size fit to screen box in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. And if you're disconnected for any reason during the webcast, you can always log back in and join the webcast again. We've had to mute the telephone lines because of the large number of people uh, dialing in today um, to reduce the background noise. So you can submit questions for Jonathan, I mean Jonathan, <laughs> you can submit questions for Steve via chat and he'll answer them during the presentation and after the presentation. Feel free to submit them whenever they come up. And um, you may want to minimize your chat window or drag it off to the side during the presentation if you find it a distraction. And now I'm going to uh, turn the presentation over to Andy Oram. He's senior editor for O'Reilly Media and a great writer in his own right and an all-around great guy. Andy? Thank you. All right, this is my pre prepared statement as an introduction to Steve. Speed is critical on websites. If you make your web visitors take an extra half second to view a page, they feel it. And they're likely to go more often to a competing site that eliminates the half second delay. But performance is also complicated with multiple interlocking considerations involving heavy testing, right? Wrong. Steve Suters, author of O'Reilly's popular book, High Performance Websites, and co-chair of our upcoming Velocity Conference in June, has made web performance a breeze. He has identified approximately 30 straightforward rules involving simple trade-offs you can understand and decide on, rules that dramatically speed up the display of your site's web pages. Steve is also an engaging presenter, as you're about to find out in this webcast. Thousands have benefited from his book and his presentations on that subject. Tomorrow at the Web 2.0 Expo in San Francisco, Steve will make a presentation from 1.30 to 2.20 p.m. Steve is also the co-chair of Velocity, which I mentioned. You've seen splash screens about it, too, but I was asked to talk about it. It's a new O'Reilly conference dedicated to web performance and operations. Velocity is on June 23rd to 24th. 2008 in Burlingame, California. The theme is Fast, Scalable, Resilient, Available. Speed and scalability are the promise behind the rules in Steve's book and presentation. Now he's going to give you a taste of his performance approach. Stay tuned. All right, thank you, Andy. This is a uh, exciting week for me. It was one year ago exactly that I did a presentation at Web 2.0 Expo San Francisco, and those slides uh, reached number two across all topics on DIG, which is pretty hard to achieve. And it's been an exciting year. A lot has happened. Um, Steve, why slow came out, my book came out, I've spoken at several conferences, and, uh, and the Velocity Conference has gotten organized. And so it's uh, just fun to look back on the past year at everything that's happened. And one exciting part of that, maybe the most exciting part of that, has been how willing Yahoo and now my current employer, Google, have been at uh, supporting me to talk about these web performance best practices uh, outside to, to the general development community. And so I'm really happy to do that today. And, and of course, O'Reilly is... Uh, great to work with on that. They, Andy was my editor, and, and uh, we had a great time doing the book, and Tim O'Reilly has been very supportive in doing the Velocity Conference, and all the other folks, Catherine and all the other folks at O'Reilly. So I want to extend a word of thanks to them for that. Um, Steve, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Um, have you, you need to accept the window that lets, makes you the presenter, cause, because we're not seeing your screen right now. Okay, there we go. Okay, there, thanks. All right. I wanted to make sure that we had that. Okay, sorry for the interruption. Oh, that's okay. It's, uh... Oh, and the other thing I wanted to mention, uh, Andy has met my three girls. They're here in the conference room with me at Google today because it's Bring Your Child to Work Day. So hi. we have some girls, you want to say hi? Hi. So we had some fun this morning. Google has a ball pit, so we were all playing in the ball pit, and we had breakfast, and there's some other activities. But as part of seeing what uh, I do at work, I thought it would be good for them to sit in on this presentation. 
Um, so, uh, uh, previously I was the chief performance Yahoo. I worked at Yahoo for about eight years and, and for the last three years there, I worked on web performance. And uh, now I'm at Google uh, doing a similar role. And one of the m most important things that I've done as part of my work has been what I call turning the view on web performance upside down. So most of my career working in the web industry has been working on large back-end architectures. And whenever someone would say that our website was too slow, I would look at the back-end uh, application code and try to look for performance improvements there. Um, you know, better database indices, compiler options, uh, replicating code across multiple data centers, pretty large complex projects. Um, but then when I took on the role at Yahoo to work on web performance from the end user's perspective, I took a step back and I looked at where was the user spending most of her time waiting. And so the slide that I'm showing now is some people call it a waterfall chart or a HTTP profile. Each of the blue horizontal bars is an HTTP request. And this chart is from my favorite packet sniffer called IBM Page Detailer. Uh, you can search for it and find the link. Down the left-hand side are icons that indicate different types of HTTP requests. So the first one is an HTML document. The red dollar sign looking thing is a style sheet. Below that, the scroll looking thing is a script, then a JPEG image, then a GIF, and so on. And what we see here is, is that, in this case, this is uh, iGoogle uh, fetched with an empty cache. We see that there are about 30 items, but across the whole time, the, the x-axis here is time, across the whole time that the user is waiting for this page to load, only 9% of that time was spent getting the HTML document from the back end. And that 9% that even includes the time for the request to go up to the server, for the server to stitch together the response, and then for that HTML document to come back. The other 91% is what, for shorthand, I call the front, front end. It actually does involve network traffic, but it's everything after the HTML document. What did the HTML document dictate the browser had to do, and then how quickly did the browser perform that, execute that? And so in this case, for iGoogle with an empty cache, only 9% is spent on the back end. The other 91% is spent on the front end. And with a prime cache, this is like a subsequent page view, uh, it's still pretty lopsided. 17% is spent on getting the HTML document, and 83% is spent on the front end. And what we see here is there are much fewer HTTP requests because iGoogle does a really good job of making all of their images and style sheets cacheable. So there's a big white gap in the middle. And what's happening here is the HTML document is being downloaded. The browser parses it and sees that there's a bunch of images and style sheets and scripts and starts reading those from the cache off disk. And that actually takes time. And then what's taking a bulk of the time is the browser parsing the JavaScript and CSS and executing any JavaScript. And so when I first noticed this at Yahoo, I thought, well, perhaps this was some anomaly of the specific Yahoo properties I was looking at. But then when I go out and look at the top 10 websites in the US, um, according to Alexa, we find that this is generally true, that a large majority of the time that the user is waiting for a page to load is on these front-end components. There are a couple exceptions here, Google and Live Search. These pages are very uh, optimized. They have very few, very little HTTP traffic in them, maybe two to four HTTP requests. So it's not that the HTML document is taking a larger amount of time in absolute terms. It's just that as a percentage, it's a larger percentage. And we actually see here that live search is so optimized in a prime cache scenario, there are no HTTP